Hi friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Katie. I thought today we'd do some chatting. So set up the camera to look at my face, which feels weird, but here we are. I also have some notes if you notice me looking at them. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about how my low buy year is going, which I haven't talked about officially on the channel. Um, maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't, that I haven't done a lot of unboxing kind of content on the channel um, for a variety of reasons. One, I haven't been buying that many things. Two, they've been mostly like one of a kind kind of items that like I could show you, but um, you couldn't get them. So I haven't really known. If you wanna like maybe see a review of what I have bought this year, just kind of like, especially in the context of what I'm gonna tell you about today, let me know because I think it could be interesting to see how what I did decide to buy interfaces with my like low buy kind of parameters, but let me know. Um, but that's, those are two of the reasons that you haven't seen a lot of unboxings here on this channel. The other thing is that like, I'm tr still trying to figure out like what my voice here is. I'm not really very interested in doing things that are already feel done by other people on the YouTube community. Like the reason I am here on YouTube is what I feel like is to like share the things that I'm doing or thinking that feel different than from what other people are just to kind of like add it to the mix. And so like I'm trying to figure out what that looks like in some of these kind of like traditional content kinds of places. So if you have any feedback, leave it below. I'm interested. But today let's talk low buy. So as a setting of the scene, I picked up fountain pens as an interest in hobby in April of 2022. It is currently August of 2023. In the course of 2022, I bought somewhere between 12 and 15 fountain pens between April and December. And some of them were pretty inexpensive. I was really getting my feet underneath me. I don't feel regret for buying um, so many so quickly, but as I came into 2023, I felt like I had a much clearer understanding of what I liked and what I didn't like, and that like I kind of needed to like tone it way back. I didn't want personally for me to be buying like another 15 pens this year. And so I set out to buy only five in the course of 2023. Um, kind of with the idea of like one per quarter and then one like kind of bonus one when, you know, something really hit me. But I wasn't too tied to that. And to be honest with you, I'm also not like super tied to the idea of five. If I end up with six or seven, like I still will feel like I have accomplished my goals. Here in August, I have bought four so far. Um, but I've also sold two. We'll get into a little bit of like what that means as I talk about some of the other things, but just, you know, so you know the lay of the land. That's where we're at. So if you're thinking about doing a no buy or a low buy, I think more so like a low buy, I think the most important thing to figure out is what your like why is. And I didn't have that very clearly defined at the beginning of the year. I had set this number. I knew I wanted to cut way down on what I was buying, but I hadn't quite focused on what my why was. And so then as the year progressed, there were, I was running into decisions that I needed to make about like, is this kind of within my guidelines for myself or not? And some of these questions are really like defined by like what the goal is. And there are different reasons that you might decide to do a low buy. So, right, if it's about money, like how much money you spend, then maybe it doesn't make sense to do it based on the number of pens you buy. It makes sense to do it more about like the total value of the pens you buy during the year. I wasn't personally too, um, 
caught up in the numbers. I have kind of my own comfort level on how much I'm willing to spend on a pen and that was fine. Um, so that wasn't really what was motivating me, but if it had, then the answers to potential loopholes are different. So for example, if I'm gifted a pen, either by friends or family or one in a giveaway or, um, you know, affiliate credits or something, does that count? Like, is that being counted against my like low buy for the year? And like the answers to those kinds of questions, like depends on what it is. If it's about how much money you're spending, the answer is probably not. Hey, free pen, awesome. If it's about how much space you want to be devoting to your fountain pens, then yeah, maybe they do. Maybe it's not about how many I purchase, it's about how many I acquire. And so then that loophole maybe is a little different. For me, it was partially about space, not so much about physical space, but about like kind of mental space. I feel like I didn't have room in my like physical rotation of pens and my desire to rotate pens for too many more pens to be in my collection. I like to have about seven or eight pens inked at a time. Well, that's not true, more like six. Uh, and I like to get to all of my pens pretty close to every month. And so um, I just like can't have a huge collection if those are what my goals are. And so if it's about space, then selling some of those pens, for example, uh, maybe buys me more slots to get more pens. That was part of it. For me, another part of it when I really addressed my why was like, I'm trying to combat the instinct to buy something when I feel stressed, overwhelmed, um, just kind of emotional in some capacity. I have a very strong instinct to throw myself into hyper focus about something on some retailer's website and to like really just throw myself into that as a way of focusing on that instead of whatever is upsetting me and then buying something kind of, I mean, not in the blink of an eye because I'm spending hours in this rabbit hole, but like kind of without the like stepping back and thinking about it critically. And so for me, this kind of consumerism mentality is a big reason for me on why I wanted to really cut down. And so for that, you know, some of these you know, the giveaway pen probably doesn't count. Um, Karina and I won an Estherbrook SD each. Um, there's a video for that on my channel. That one probably doesn't account. It's not a thing I bought to self-soothe. And if that's the behavior I'm trying to address, this doesn't count against it. If, but I do have a little bit of like, uh, I don't really want to have too many pens at a time. And then it kind of does get count against that. So I think if we're talking about low spend kinds of things, I think that is like the most critical thing for me and for you, if you're interested in doing it to really narrow down because we're not, I'm not, I won't speak for you. I'm not always going to follow the letter of the law. Like I am a person who is going to look for loopholes and it's helpful for me to focus on what some of them are and then to make decisions accordingly. Here are a few other things I learned that I, that I thought you might find interesting too. Um, not all parts of the year are equal. So as I said, I was trying to think of this quarterly and in the first quarter of 2023, I was really proud of myself for how I was doing. I'd commissioned a pen that was going to take months and um, in general, I wasn't too tempted by the things I was seeing. And so I was real busy patting myself on the back, congratulating myself for being like so on top of it. 
Well, as the year continues, it turns out it's because nothing good was coming out in Q1. Obviously not that nothing good was coming out, but like so much emphasis had been on getting new products out for the holiday season and the buying season and it like dips in Q1. And so it turns out I wasn't, you know, holding firm to my low spend so much because I was so great, but because I wasn't being tempted by anything because no one was releasing anything. So that's the thing just to note is like, not all parts of the year are equal. I have a feeling I'm going to have a very challenging time going into the fall and the holiday season that's coming up. Now I still have one pen to get and maybe two if we count the ones I sold. So I'm feeling pretty okay about where I'm, I'm going in the months ahead, but I do know that they're gonna be harder than some of the earlier months. And it's just like a thing to know. Another thing is like kind of setting up the rules. What counts, what doesn't for what you're trying to reduce. So for me, it was fountain pens over a hundred dollars, but also like don't go too crazy on the cheap ones either. That wasn't a thing I was at a huge risk of, although I did uh, fall deeply in love with the Jinhao 82s. And I th think something like 18 of them have come through here, but I mostly um, swapped the finials and sold them off. So that looked bad for a little while, but I didn't end up. But I'm not counting the like three or four um, Jinhao 82s that I got. Um, against me. I mean, you could say you are acquiring more fountain pens, and that is true, uh, but they don't really hit that same feeling of what I'm trying to reduce. They are in frequent use, um, taking with me to work and whatever. And so, like, maybe it sounds like an arbitrary rule to you, but, like, for me, it, it makes sense. And I didn't hit, I mean, these are, like, three or four bucks each. I didn't hit like the 30, 50, 90 dollar. Like I wasn't, I wasn't really participating in any of that. That could have been slippery. Um, but my like thing of like what counts being over a hundred really did encompass the things. A lot of the things that I'm really interested in, the venues, the hand turned pens or whatever are often living in the hundred to two hundred dollar category. And so like that's where I felt at risk. That's what I was trying to like pay attention about. The other thing was um, I didn't put a restriction on nib buying or ink sample buying. Those are smaller purchases. The nibs can get expensive and inks could, but I'm buying samples and they don't take up much space. I've decided I can have as many nibs as I want someday. I don't have a problem with that. They swap in and out. Um, not a problem. If I was buying something, I wanted it to, when it makes sense, prioritize things that um, would fit my Yovo number no. six custom ground nibs because I like to buy them and I want to have like a whole stable of things I can use them for. And um, no resin pens that I haven't seen the individual one of. So I follow a ton of handmade, hand made pen makers and I love them but I want to see the individual pen I'm buying you know as much as I loved the idea of the narwhal tromso or whatever those resins can look really different pen to pen and I am extremely picky <laughs> And also, it's a good line to draw for me. If I say I'm not going to buy any resin pens I can't see the individual one of, it knocks out so many of the pens that I'm interested in. If there's one that like I'm just dying to get, often you can reach out to a retailer that can help you pick one. Um, so there are options there, but it is kind of nice to just disqualify huge numbers of the things that like are risky but not beloved, if that makes sense. Similarly, I said no pens that were filling mechanisms I was interested in. I am a cartridge converter kind of girl. There's no sense in like really going after pens that don't work for me in terms of how I like to use my pens. I like to 
only partially fill my converters. I like to switch out the inks every two weeks or something. Um, it just doesn't make sense. And if I'm only buying a few, I really want to prioritize the ones that work best for me. If I found something I had to have, just really couldn't say no to, fine. But in terms of guidelines for what was going to fulfill my um, goals for the low buy, those were them. The other thing that helped is to identify what my values are in general in the community. So for example, for me, this is that it would fit my Yovo custom nibs. I want to be able to use them. And also that like the proceeds benefit um, small companies, individuals. Um, that's just a thing I'm passionate about generally outside of the fountain pen community, but also in the fountain pen community. So if I decide, if I'm on the fence, I like love this pen, I really want to get it, but I'm like, eh, I'm on a low buy. I don't know, but maybe I want it to be one of my five for the year. Like a way that helps me is like, well, buying this from this individual person makes a difference in their lives. And I feel good about that as a person who supports artists and crafts people. And so like that helps me feel good about deciding to go ahead and buying it. Um, I still, I still buy from other places. I've just become an Atlas affiliate, which I will leave the code for before below, which I realize is an ironic thing to talk about in a low buy situation. But they're so sweet. I've been there. It's it's a great store. So um, now I've distracted myself. Um, but like, if I'm in a situation in which I'm like really thinking about what things to buy, having things be aligned with my values helps me feel good about the things that I like actively do choose to buy. Because I don't want to buy something and then feel guilty about it right? And be like, oh, well, I was trying to do a low buy and I bought this thing and whatever. Like, if it's within my means and according to my values, there's no, there's no guilt required there. Hopefully it's within my low buy things, but you know, if it's within your means and according to your values, go for it. The last thing that I think it is a thing I've learned in the eight months is to emphasize communities and relationships that focus not only on buying new things. Um, it's really fun to look at pictures of new stuff together and I still do that a lot. Karina and I send pictures of fountain pens to each other daily and usually multiple times a day. But because we are both trying to attune ourselves to what really feels good to us and makes sense in our collection and not like things that are just like totally outside of what we want, we've like gotten into the practice. I mean, we still, we still buy some things, but we've gotten into the practice of like appreciating things for like the pretty thing they are. It's saying, I don't, you know, I don't need this. I can admire it without needing to acquire it. And that has taken practice. At first, I like wanted every, that, that split second of like, it's pretty, I want it was really strong. Whereas, you know, in, in um, practicing this with my friends, it can be, I like this, good work to the people who made it. I don't, I don't need to own it looking at the pictures is good enough for me. Watching your video about it is good enough for me. So that's really nice. I have really cut down on my unboxing video watching though, because I do feel like that can be a little bit tempting, um, but it's gotten less hard as it goes on. Um, but it, it can be challenging, especially if people are affiliates or being gifted pens it can kind of spur this idea that like, I should be getting things all the time too, even though my circumstances are different than theirs are. So 
The last thing that I have been doing across the board this year is trying to put things in my cart for seven days before I buy them. And I can't tell you how many things I want in the first hour of looking at them that I never think about after day one and really never think about after day seven. Um, and so that I found is a pretty valuable tool. It doesn't always work. If something is like limited edition, scarcity kinds of things, you still may fall for it. And I say fall for it negative. It still might be like, sometimes you get the pen immediately because it hits you that hard. But for a lot of things, you can put it in your cart for seven days and you can see how you feel about it later. Anyway, um, let me know. I'll be curious. What strategies do you use to like keep your collection in a way that feels good to you. So it doesn't have to be, your priorities might be really different in terms of how you spend your money, um, how you curate your collection, but I'd be curious to hear what insights you have about what helps make your collection feel good to you. So please leave them below. I'll be curious to hear. I'll be chatting with you in the comments. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.